Hi everyone, it's Helen Horta here, founder of FormHelp, and today we are looking at the Australia Digital Passenger Declaration, or the DPD, and this is the app version of the DPD. Now, if you haven't created an account, go ahead and create one before you can sign in. And for those of you who do have an account, go ahead and enter your username and your password and then proceed to sign in. And next you'll come to this page here, My Digital Passenger Declarations, or My DPDs. And below in blue where it says current, if you click on there, it will display any of your current DPDs. And under the heading past, if you click on there, it will display any of your past DPDs. But for this tutorial, we will go straight to the blue box on the top right hand with the little plus sign that says new DPD. So let's select that to commence a new DPD. And as you can see here, it says before you provide your passport, make sure you have your passport and vaccine certificates with you and then proceed to continue. And in this section here, it is find your flight. So it says please enter your flight number and departure date, then hit the search button. So above there in the white box where it says flight number, place your flight number in there and then put in the departure date and again, Press the search button. Now, if your flight has a stopover on the way to Australia, please enter both legs of the flight separately. So let's go ahead and type in a flight number. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and type in QF138. And then I'm going to put in the date that this flight leaves. And then I will press the search button, the little magnifying glass to your right. And in this example, you'll see that one result was found. So QF138, and it's got the Christchurch to Sydney, departing on the 23rd of May 2022. And then next you'll get to review the flight details. So just go ahead and check that the flight number, the departure port, the local departure date and time, the arrival port and the local arrival date and time are correct. And if you're happy with that, proceed to confirm. Now I'm just going to go back one step, so if you can't find your flight, you do need to add it manually, and it's got that option there at the bottom that says can't find your flight, add it manually, so go ahead and click on that, and then add your flight details manually. Okay, so when entering your flight details manually, go ahead and put in the departure country, and you've got the drop down um, arrow there. Uh, for the departure port, it says please select your departure country, so again, Use that drop arrow uh, if you need. Put in your scheduled local departure date. Uh, and then just remembering that your declaration cannot be completed more than seven days prior to the departure date. Put in your scheduled departure time. So that's the local time. Put in the carrier name. So start typing in the carrier name there or go to the drop down um, arrow and it should show up with the, the different carrier names put in your flight number. So the letters at the start of your flight number will be automatically added when you select your carrier airline. So for the flight number, just put in the numbers only. Uh, put in your arrival country, so start typing your country name. Put in your arrival port, so please select the arrival country. And then put in your scheduled local arrival uh, date. So again, the arrival date cannot be more than 24 hours before your departure date. And this is to account for time zone differences. And then put in your scheduled local arrival time and then proceed to save and next. Okay, apologies, we do need to go back one more step. Now, if you have more than one flight, so your departure flight and your flight landing into Australia, you will need to add those two flights. And your um, screen should look like this, so it will show your first flight, and then it will ask you to add your second flight on this page. Okay, so when you get to the stage and it says, um, it will say something along the lines of um, that your first flight is not landing in Australia and then it will give you an opportunity to add your second flight. So on this page is where it should say at the bottom to add your next flight, all right? Okay, back to where we were. So once you have confirmed those flight details, you will come to this section here, the information collection consent. So have a read through that and once you are happy and you are ready to agree or disagree, then go ahead and select I agree or I do not agree. 
So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and select I agree. Next, we come to the scan your passport page. Now you need to hold your phone camera over the photograph page of your passport and then you need to capture the photo page of your passport. Now to the left you can see the uh, yellow box, there is a picture of your passport page. The one with the little red box around it, that is the passport page that has your picture on it with your personal details. Now that is the section that you need to capture a photo of. Now if you go ahead and select scan, you will see that a blue box will appear and it will frame your passport photo page. Once that box turns green, that means that your passport photo page has been uploaded. And as you can see below, it says, please wait while we process your passport and this may take a few minutes. Next, you get to review your passport details. So make sure that you check that your passport number, your family name, surname are correct, your date of birth, your gender, your nationality, the date of issue of your passport, the date of expiration of your passport, and the country of issue. If that's all correct, go ahead and proceed to save and next. Next, we come to this section here, which is scanning the e-passport chip, or the RFID, RFID. Now, what you need to do is place the phone on your passport. So please place your phone on top of your passport as shown in the guide and then press scan. Now as shown in this example here, it's showing you how you can scan your RFID chip um, in the white screen. But I found personally um, to the left in the yellow screen that I was able to scan my chip this way instead of the way it's showing on the white screen and it worked for me. So see what works for you and do that. Now I do know that there have been a lot of people that have struggled to scan their chip and if you're one of these people and it's just not working I would recommend that you just do the online version because there's no need to do any scanning all you need to do is just enter your passport details manually take a picture of your passport photo page and that's pretty much it but go with how you feel and um, do what what works on the day and next we'll come to image capture. So here you need to take a selfie with a plain background and you need to remove any masks or face coverings. And you can see below the little blue box, it says take a photo. So go ahead and click on that. Next you'll see this round red circle. And now your face needs to be within that red circle and you will get prompts as to whether you need to move closer or away from the camera and then once that box turns yellow or green then you know that the photo is acceptable and you'll see uh, this little tick here that says save and next so go ahead and proceed to save and next and then below you'll see the message that says hold on we are processing your image so wait for that to process and then you'll go to the next screen which will be travel history so under travel history it says add your itinerary for the last 14 days on your way to australia now have you been or will you be in any other countries in the 14 days prior to your flight to australia uh, go ahead and select a yes or no and in this example because i am flying from new zealand i'm going to select a yes and then i'm going to proceed to continue and then I will go ahead and type in the country. So in this case, it would be New Zealand. And now that I've typed in New Zealand, the box underneath it that says plus add country visited, you then need to click on that box and it will add New Zealand as one of the countries that you have visited. And then you can proceed to continue. Now, if you have transited or visited other countries in the 14 days prior to your travel to Australia, you do need to add those countries. So just add another country um, as per the options below. Now, I did get a query from one of the viewers about the travel history and her query was, was wouldn't everybody traveling to Australia from another country always have to select yes, um, especially if you have been or will be in another country in the 14 days prior to your flight to Australia. 
So for me, for her, you know, we interpreted that question to mean yes, I have, and yes, most probably everybody entering Australia from another country would select yes. However, everybody interprets the question um, differently. So some people, you know, could be traveling from another country and still select no, I haven't been to any other countries other than the one that I've just flown from. So go with how you feel, you know, the way that you interpret the question, answer it um, according to your interpretation. Or if you need further advice, it's really good um, to make use of the Global Service Centre and their contact details will be below. So if you're unsure, uh, yeah, just give them a call and you know, they're the experts. So they'll be able to give you the advice that you need. And the next section we come to is the planned movement section and it's transits in Australia. The question is asking, are you transiting through Australia to another country? If you select a yes, the next questions to expect are, if you are transiting through Australia to another country, select the length of time you will be in transit. So you've got those options there. Next, put in the final destination country. So uh, start typing the country name in there and the expected departure port from Australia so start typing the airport name in there and if you select no you are not transiting through Australia then the next questions to expect are interstate travel so within 14 days after arriving in Australia or within 14 days after leaving quarantine do you intend to travel to a state or territory other than your state or territory of arrival and if you do select yes so go ahead and select the states or territories that you will be visiting and if you select no, there are no further questions that follow that. But so let's look at the travel intent. Now the question is, do you intend to live in Australia for the next 12 months? If you select yes, these are your options here. Migrating permanently to Australia, visitor or temporary entrant or resident returning to Australia. So go ahead and make your selection and then press confirm. And if you select no, that you do not intend to live in Australia for the next 12 months, then go ahead and make your selection and then again uh, proceed to confirm. Now in this example, I am going to select that I am a visitor or temporary entrant. Then I'll proceed to confirm. And then the next question is going to ask um, my intended length of stay in Australia. So as you can see in, here in the options, there are days, months or years so go ahead and make your selection. So if it's days, put in the number of days that you intend to stay in Australia. And then you need to put in your country of residence. So in this case, um, if I'm from New Zealand, I'm going to go ahead and put in New Zealand. And then put in your main reason uh, for travel. So as you can see here, you've got all these options here. So in this example, I'm going to put in that I am visiting family and friends. And then proceed to confirm. And then the last bit there is your occupation. So you need to go ahead and put in your occupation and then proceed to continue. Now this next section is the contact details and your intended address in Australia. So this is where you will live or spend the most time while in Australia. So go ahead and put in your address. So enter it there in that box or you can also enter the address manually. Next you need to put in your contact details in Australia. So um, put in a phone number there and if you don't have an Australian phone number then go ahead and choose your country um, and then it will come up with your country code and put in your number. Next put in your email address and then your preferred contact method. So you can see there you've got the um, two choices so phone or email so make a selection there. And next we come to the emergency contact details. So the emergency contact details can be for someone in Australia or overseas. So go ahead and put in their given names, their family name, their phone number, so it can be their local phone number whether they're overseas or in Australia. Put in their email address and then their, um, their actual physical address and that's optional. And then proceed to continue. Now in this section here you get to review your trip details. So it says there, please review your trip details below and make sure that everything is right. So you can see that the flight details, the passenger identity, the travel history, the planned movements and the contact details are all complete. And as you can see there, there are down arrows next to each of those sections. And if you click on the down arrow, it will show you 
um, the details for each section so just check to make sure that everything is correct and if you're happy to proceed to submit and then submit and you'll notice that this little message will come up you will only be able to amend contact details once you have submitted your trip okay i'm happy with that i will proceed to continue and next we come to this section here so at the very top you can see your flight details there below that in the blurry section is where your personal details should be and then below that is the trip detail so as you can see it's been submitted because we went through that already next is the quarantine detail section which we will commence and then following that we will go on to the health information which is also commenced so let's go ahead and get started on the quarantine details now as you can see it says uh, that this is your quarantine declaration which will be shared with state and territory authorities in line with our privacy policy so go ahead and read through that information i will just read that last paragraph there so it says i have checked the quarantine requirements of the jurisdiction of first arrival and any other domestic jurisdictions i intend to travel to i have made quarantine arrangements prior to my travel where required and then you need to select one of the options below so the three options we get to choose from is the government managed quarantine which is state or territory hotel quarantine the next option is other quarantine arrangements including home quarantine and then the last one is quarantine free arrival for fully vaccinated only and not available in all states now for the government managed quarantine this will normally be for the unvaccinated however check the state or territory that you're visiting because you may not need to go into managed quarantine if you have an exemption and you may be allowed to just quarantine at home but check the requirements for the state or territory that you're entering or visiting first now a common query i receive is regarding options two and three below so that's the other quarantine arrangements including home quarantine and quarantine free arrival for fully vaccinated only and it's not available in all states now if you have arrived on a quarantine free arrival flight then you can go ahead and select that option um, however if you didn't arrive on a quarantine free arrival flight then just select other quarantine arrangements including home quarantine now if you do select government managed quarantine then these are the questions you should expect do you wish to quarantine with any other passengers yes or no and then the answer provided will assist us with quarantine planning example if your family wishes to quarantine together and then how many people will be in your hotel quarantine room go ahead and put in your number and the next questions require a yes or no answer now will you require medical or other assistance while you are in quarantine yes or no and if you reply yes then do you need a doctor when you arrive yes or no if you answered yes then you need to provide the details of your illness and if you are currently ill please provide details of your symptoms or uh, condition so place that information in that box there and do you have any pre-existing medical conditions yes or no if you select yes will you require additional medication to cover your 14 days in quarantine select yes or no and if you do select yes you just need to provide the details of your medications in the box below and the next question is do you need mobility aids or assistance and if you select yes there are no further questions the next question are you suffering from mental health conditions if you select yes there are no further questions are you pregnant yes or no if you select yes there are no further questions are you caring for a baby if you select yes there are no further questions do you suffer from any allergies if you select yes you just need to specify the allergies in the box below do you need an interpreter during quarantine select yes or no and if you do select yes you will need to specify the language that you need the interpreter service for do you require any other assistance yes or no and if you do select yes then you need to let us know if you have dietary requirements cultural or religious needs and then please provide the details of the support you require below and then you can proceed to continue 
Now for this example, I am going to go back and uh, answer no for all of these questions. And then we are going to have a look at what questions arise if we opt for the other quarantine option. So let's have a look at that. So if I go ahead and select other quarantine arrangements, including home quarantine, you can see there that there are no further questions. If you select quarantine free arrival for the fully vaccinated only, you can see that there are no further questions. But for this example, we are going to select other quarantine arrangements, including home quarantine and proceed to continue. Now this section here is the quarantine declaration. So you need to review your quarantine declaration. So as you can see here, it says, please review and confirm your quarantine declaration. Now, if you look at the bottom, it should have the quarantine selection that you made. So in this example, it says other quarantine arrangements, including home quarantine. And if you need to make an amendment, then press amend. If you need to save an exit, then save an exit. And if you're ready to submit your quarantine declaration, then go ahead and press submit. Now ensure that you do read all that information. And if you are happy, then proceed to submit. Now on the screen here, you can see that your trip details have been submitted. Your quarantine details have been submitted. And now we are going to go ahead and fill in the health information section. So go ahead and click on health information and let's get started. So at the top it reads, your health declaration will be shared with state and territory authorities in line with our privacy policy. And the first question reads, are you an Australian citizen? permanent resident or immediate family member and if you select a yes there are no further questions but do note what it says below so giving false or misleading information to the Australian government is a serious offence penalties apply to breaches of state and territory public health orders and I declare I am fully vaccinated with an Australian approved or recognised COVID-19 vaccine and I have evidence to support this my last dose of the vaccine was at least seven days before the day of my flight is scheduled to commence. Now, if you select no, that you are not fully vaccinated with an Australian approved or recognised COVID-19 vaccine, then the next question to follow is, I am under 18 years of age and not fully vaccinated. Now, if you're a parent with young children and your children are under 18 years of age and they're not fully vaccinated, this is where you would come and say, yes, my child is under 18 and they are not fully vaccinated. And if you are not under 18 years of age and not fully vaccinated, then you are going to go ahead and select no. And the following question will pop up. I am over 18 years of age and declare I cannot be vaccinated for medical reasons and I have medical proof to support this. So see proof of medical exemption when coming to Australia. And if you select no that you do not have an exemption, the next question to pop up will be, I do not meet Australia's vaccination requirements. You need to put down a yes or a no. So if you do not re uh, meet Australia's vaccination requirements, you could put in there, no, I do not meet Australia's um, vaccination requirement and then proceed to continue. Now if you don't meet Australia's vaccination requirement your DPD email reply could say something along the lines of confirmation at check-in. Now part of the boarding requirements is that you produce or provide your DPD summary and proof of your vaccination certificates or proof of your uh, exemption. So just be aware that if you don't meet Australia's vaccination requirements or you don't have an exemption that you could be prevented from boarding um, your flight to Australia or the Australia Border Force could be looking out for you when you land. But who knows, um, hopefully sometime in the near future, this will just be a thing of the past. And if you do select that you can declare that you cannot be uh, vaccinated for medical reasons and that you do have medical proof to support this, go ahead and select yes and then um, you will need to upload an image of your uh, exemption for COVID-19. Now to add your image, just a click on the add image box below. You can either take a photo of your exemption or you can choose an image on your phone. So go ahead and select the choice that applies to you and then proceed to continue. Now if we go back a step and say that we are fully vaccinated, 
then go ahead and select yes and then proceed to continue. Now this section here is the vaccination details and it says please ensure you enter your important vaccination information including all doses and booster before you leave this page. Now do you have a vaccination certificate or evidence of vaccination to scan? Yes or no and then the note below is you can scan your Australian issued international COVID-19 vaccination certificate QR code here but for all other vaccination certificates it is important so that you enter your vaccination information including all doses and booster in the section below. So as you can see there in blue it says scan your vaccine certificate QR code so this is for the Australian issued uh, ones and if you don't have one of those then you can select no and then you'll need to manually input the information of your um, vaccination certificate. Now if you do have a Australian issued vaccination certificate so let's go ahead and select yes and press scan vaccine certificate QR code. Now because I don't actually have an Australian issued certificate with a QR code it's not going to scan anything but for the purposes of showing you what to expect you'll see the screen here which says scan vaccination certificate QR code and it says that you need to place your certificate on a flat surface and then I'm assuming it will scan your certificates for you. Now for those of you who do not have a Australian issued uh, certificate let's go ahead and enter our details manually. Okay so we're going to select no we do not have a um, Australian QR vaccination certificate to scan. So it says traveller vaccine doses. How many COVID-19 vaccine doses have you had? So if you press on the down arrow box it will give you some options to choose from. So go ahead and make your selection and then proceed to confirm. Now in this example because I have opted for three or more doses I now have to fill in the um, information for each dose. So the date of the vaccination, the country of the vaccination, and the vaccination brand. And then I need to repeat those same steps for vaccine dose 2 and vaccine dose 3. So go ahead and put in that information. And once that's all done, you can go ahead and upload a image of your certificate. So as you can see here, it says add image or photo. And then you get to take a photo or you get to choose an image. And then you can upload it. So let's go ahead and upload an image. So I'm going to opt for take a photo and now I've got the image of the vaccination certificate here and then I'm going to press photo, taking a photo of it. I can either retake the photo or use that photo. Now in this example because I'm happy with the photo I am going to go ahead and use the photo and in the next screen you can see that your photo will show up here. And then you can proceed to save and next. Next we'll come to the review health information section. So it says please review the health information you have provided. Now you've got the health declaration there that's complete. And then you have the COVID-19 vaccinations that's complete. So if you do um, press on each of the down arrows you can check uh, any of the information that you've provided. If you're all happy with that then you can go ahead and submit if you need to save an exit then save an exit but in this example we are going to go ahead and proceed to submit now here you can see that your trip details have been submitted your quarantine details have been submitted and your health information has been submitted and you can also now view your summary so let's go ahead and select view summary and this is what you should expect when viewing your summary now as you can see here it says DPD summary, it has your name, your date of birth, your travel documents number or your passport number there. And then you can see there it says that your trip declaration has been submitted, your emergency health declaration has been submitted and your quarantine planning section has been submitted. And then the border declaration section which says not applicable, um, don't worry too much about that, I think that most people would have not applicable in that section. And next you'll see the health summary. So your health information um, declaration should be complete. Your COVID-19 vaccination should show complete. 
and then your quarantine pathway, the one that you've nominated, should show up in there. So in this example, it has other quarantine arrangements, including home quarantine, and beneath that is the border summary. And again, the border declaration treatment status um, will most likely be not applicable. So again, don't be concerned if you see not applicable. Now you must ensure that you do have a copy of your DPD summary on you, either in digital form or a hard copy so that you can present it for boarding. Now once you have completed your DPD, you should receive an email like this and it should say something along the lines of DPD status notification and it reads you have completed all information required before check-in, print a copy of your DPD summary screen or save an image of the summary screen on your mobile device to show its check-in along with your COVID-19 vaccination information. Now you can access the summary screen by clicking on the view summary button in your DPD account and your airline check-in agent will ensure you have completed your DPD including for any children travelling with you and your COVID-19 vaccination uh, information before completing check-in. And if you need more information visit the Department of Home Affairs website. And that concludes our tutorial on the Australia DPD. Thank you for your patience and I hope you feel a little more confident in completing your Australia DPD on your own. And if you have any questions, have a look in the comments section below in case your query has already been answered. And if it hasn't, please bear with me as I do work full time and I am a busy mum and a wife. So if you do have a query, I will definitely reply, but it might not be immediately, but I will try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Now I'm trying something new, so if you have watched the DPD tutorial and you're still not comfortable completing it for yourself, I am offering a service to help you complete your DPD or I can complete it on your behalf. So if you're interested or you know of someone who is interested, you can email me at admin at formhelp.com.au and I will need you to send me through copies of your passport page your vaccination certificate um, or your exemption, your flight details or itinerary and then some other details as you would have seen in the tutorial. Okay, thanks again everyone. All the best with your DPD applications. If it gets a bit overwhelming, go have a little break and then come back to it. Okay, take care. Safe travels. It's Helen Hortai, founder of Form Help, signing out. Bye.